go. There's the music. Happy Saturday racing. Well, welcome to the initial edition of the Morning Post, brought to you by, funnily enough, the Racing Post and sponsored by William Hill as well. Dave Orton, every Saturday around about 10 o'clock for an hour or so of your time. What you're having for breakfast, let us know, because this is an interactive show. Your chance to get your words in. The markets are all set, aren't they? The ground is what it is. The weather is pretty much settled. We've got so many features coming out your way this morning. Unmissable stuff with a great panel that joins me. So every Saturday, here we go. This is it, the Morning Post. And uh, shall we see who is indeed with me? Legend himself. And Cheltenham is back. The jumps are back. He's in his tweed. It's Cheltenham is back. Tweed's out. I bought, actually, I bought this in the summer. I put on so much weight since I went to America. I can only just do the buttons up. I couldn't even get the strides on this morning, so I've got work to do. Absolute cheapskate, going for it out of season. I like it. Absolutely. It's paid off it. now, hasn't it? All got right, Kills. It, yeah. Can't wait to see what Kills is going to give us. <laughs> Loads of previews done already, of course. We're going to bring the paper to life for you this morning, basically. That's what you want, isn't it? Loads of features coming up. Another racing post legend joins me. We're going to be talking about veterans chases along the way. And here he is, Graham Robway. <laughs> Yeah, good to be here, Dave. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this uh, inaugural show. You said initial. I would go, always go with inaugural. There's my first correction of the yeah, morning. first correction. There'll be plenty of those to come over the next few weeks. Coming back sure. at you. I see you've done your punter versus pro this morning, as usual. Oh, yes. Uh, and, yeah. and, and, and they call you the edge in that, don't they? Which is <laughs> which you, you used to do the racing post naps. Are you still well, doing the edge? You're going back a long time, but there was a, a column once in the racing post called the edge, and we did have an entry in the naps table under the edge so uh, ever win it we came close a few times that's but a we no never won. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we did finish in the first three and get in the pays a few times but but i do remember one time going to the last month like clear and then tipping 30 losers in a row yeah. to lose it so that was a complete disaster i had 64 in a row once did you yeah. did, did you win it once i won it a couple of times i actually won yeah. the jumps one thanks to a 28 to 1 winner at red car yeah it's a great time of year, this, lads, isn't it? I mean, look, the weather is set, isn't it? All right, The jumps is back. Thank goodness Donny is on. You'd have all seen that breaking now. We're going to get up to Doncaster shortly. But uh, this is where a start is born, if you like, because each and every week we're going to bring the trading floor at William Hill here into the studio. And down from Yorkshire, Johnny Simpson, an introduction, a debut, a Yorkshireman born and bred. Absolutely, Dave. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here. It's... Um... Something about a big Saturday, Cheltenham on, um, really exciting. The the jump season is here, the flat season is almost finished. Um, but no, we're looking forward to it. Hopefully we'll give the customers plenty of value over this, the coming months and hopefully a winner or two. Yeah, you set the prices, Johnny, don't you? I mean, this is, is it, it, it's something you do. You know, we're going to be talking about the old row at Aintree later on in the show. You said you did them on the way to the train station the other day. I did, yeah. The, uh, the veterans chase and the, the old row and the two big races on Sunday at Aintree. Yeah. Uh, great card if anyone's in the area highly recommend going to a and it's a great course uh, yeah so we, we priced them up uh, yesterday afternoon um, and we'll see how the markets unfold well let's stick with you Johnny because this is a massive weekend for William Hill isn't it of course all about Cheltenham you're sponsoring the meeting of course you've got sponsorship up at Donny as well Cheltenham Saturdays you tell me would be like any Cheltenham Saturday bigger than Champions Day all the rest of it oh they'll be immensely bigger uh I don't know what it is about the National Hunt and Cheltenham, especially on a Saturday. The turnover would be far greater than, for argument's sake, a Saturday at Ascot, um, like Champions Day last weekend. Uh, I don't know what it is, the punters, they just absolutely love it. They build up all the way up to the festival. Uh, obviously, we've got several meetings between now and now and March. Um, but yeah, we've got uh, plenty of value and um, hopefully the customers will pick a winner or two. We've got you in here most Saturdays coming down. They put you up overnight. You're a member at Cheltenham as well, not I am. I've been a member since... 16 or 18, whatever the uh, the club 16 to 24 offer they did uh, way back when. I'm not sure if it's exactly the same now, but I've been going to Cheltenham since I was uh, three or four with the parents and uh, member since I was 16. Commiserations, then you're in here with us basically. <laughs> uh, right, e each and every week we're going to be giving you a bet boost. All right, that's what you want out there, isn't it? And uh, of course, it's Group One action today, the last Group One of the domestic season. And we thought he was going to be favourite, but he's on the slide. He's now even bigger out. It's Diego Velasquez. That's going to be the boost, it right? It is. For the t duration of the show, it uh, will be three to one, up to £40. Pounds. Um, if you go onto the website or on the app uh, under specials, he'll be, uh, you'll be able to navigate it to it there. We'll be three to one. We're happy to take him on today on the heavy ground. 
Uh, so for the duration of the show, three to one from five to two, up to 40 quid. Away we go. We'll be, right, that's live, basically, for you online now, up to 40 quid. Fill your boots with Diego Velasquez if you want. I mean, this is a, this is a race that Aidan O'Brien has farmed, and he's the big horse of the day. That's the debut boost. We'll be doing that for the entirety of the show. Go there now. We'll be previewing that race for you, of course, in its singularity, giving it the welly with the lads a little bit later on. Let's have a look at exactly what has got in store for you this morning then right we'll be doing a newspaper roundup each and every week we'll be bringing the paper to life as i said to you so we'll be looking at the front page we'll be looking at some of the previews the trading posts with the guys all these big questions get your questions in you can do it below if you're watching on youtube get involved anything on twitter hashtag a new hashtag the morning post let's rev that one right up like and subscribe that's what it's all about we'll be going live to the track each and every week for you we got the best reporters in the game let's bring it to life we're going to go to donny and cheltenham coming up shortly for you and getting the live word from the tracks with the best in the business we'll also be giving you an irish angle believe it or not david jennings is waiting on the line for us a little bit later on it's galway today isn't it loads of representation of course at cheltenham had a rather good day this is a meeting they traditionally do well at dj will be giving us the Irish angle. Sunday Sizzlers is a new promo for you as well. Basically, all the preview shows that have been done so far this week, they don't look at the Sundays. We've now got the markets live for you. We're going to be going at Old Rowan, of course, at Aintree tomorrow's decent racing in Ireland, hopefully with the weather, and Wincanton as well. Anything you fancy, get it in. And we'll be doing the live previews before those big all important naps for you. One from each of us. And guess what? We're going to boost them as well. So stick around to the end of the show. Right. Shall we crack on, gents? Well, about time. I was waiting for you to shut up. That will be an impossibility. <laughs> what did you have for breakfast this morning, Kills? Just out of interest. I had smoked salmon and cream cheese sandwich. That's pathetic and very <laughs> That's unlikely. That's all they had next door. Was it? G, what do you like for breakfast? Well, I had to pick up a sandwich and all. I only had ham and cheese, though. I'm not as posh as Kills. Give us some class. You, you've been put up in a hotel, I'm imagining, haven't you? Yeah, I'm not sure class or half a dozen croissants and a pint of orange juice. Is that, is that classy? Yeah, well, I don't know about that. All right, let us know. This is a breakfast show. We're going to be with you each and every Saturday. And now, look, we're going to stick with Monday's paper, actually, for you today, believe it or not, because the big jump-off is out there for you, as you've probably seen. 72 pages, unmissable stuff. We did a video preview of that, Kills, didn't we, and all that sort of thing. Brought it to life. It's all in there. Here we are. Look, there you go. The big jump off. It's there for you. You can go and get it. Digital edition is out there if you missed it in Monday's paper. Uh, and again, you, you two have both contributed to that? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I did uh, about four pages on novice chases. Yeah, because you were in America for half of it, weren't you? So uh, you got away lightly this year, did you? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. I did a bit of an anti, <laughs> I did a bit of an anti post piece as well. So put a few horses anti post. Not for Cheltenham. Mm. Ah, now not for Cheltenham because that's. Yeah, should we just quickly talk about the bee in your bonnet this week? And you've come up with there's something called FOMO out there, isn't there? Which is one of those abbreviations, you know, FOMO, fear of missing out. You've added to that, haven't you? Yeah, fear of missing Cheltenham. Um, you know, it's just it's just one of those things. It it, it gets under my skin sometimes. I I, uh, I read the Gordon Elliott piece, and it's it's not it's not a slight on Gordon Elliott. It's just said I've got to mind I've got to mind Jerry Colon. We won't be over races, and, and and it wasn't. That particular horse is just the fact that everybody's going to say that all year. You know, we, we have a we we have a basically a seven month jump season. Really, we forget the we forget the summer. It's you know we're talking proper jumps, October down to the end of April, and five months literally nothing happens, and then we have an eight week frenzy at the end. Right, you know, because they don't want to run their horses mm. before Cheltenham, and I think I think ten of the ten of the Grade One winners last year ran two or fewer times. And it never used to be like that, but because People have started doing it. Everyone thinks you have to do it, and it makes it worse. So the number of runs is going down year on year on year, and you might as well not, you know, might as well not bother having half the season. Start it in January instead. No more FOMO. Now fear of missing <laughs> Cheltenham. You were itching to get in there as well. This is right up your street. This sort of line, isn't it? Well, it is, yeah. But don't you think that that trainers nowadays just think that they can only really get one huge run out of these horses every year for one reason or another, and they train them to do it at Cheltenham, don't they? Yeah. Um, it's not just yeah, Cheltenham, you, though, is it? I mean, look at yeah, but no, no, the is, other races. That never used to be the case, does it? So have the horses gone soft, or have the trainers gone soft? Well, I think what's happened. We see the way that a lot of other horses are campaigned. Give you Kitty's Light, for instance, ran loads of last, ran loads of last, loads of times last year. Last three runs, Ida wins, Scottish National wins, uh, Belfast Five Gold Cup wins, 
Like, you know what I mean? Horses are tougher than they, they, they give them credit for. And, you know, they just don't want to run them. They're scared. Uh, and, it, you know, they, 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 they don't run, mind running them three weeks later at Aintree or Punchestown, do they? You know, they've got to get to Cheltenham first. And I just think we're wasting, you know, we're wasting so much of the season by not seeing all the good horses. I just think we're, we're living in a different time. We're living in a different time. We are living time. in a different time. It doesn't make it a good one. And <laughs> no, it doesn't make it a good one. I agree with you on that. <laughs> as, as you know. But, but it took I, us 12 minutes to get Kills' <laughs> depression on the show. But I do think that, 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 that these horses are trained for one or two races a year, and they weren't they weren't before. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. it, it was quite... Yeah, because they don't have to be. No, it was quite... <laughs> But it was quite possible to run loads because everyone was doing it. Yeah. But now that if you run loads, you get beaten by horses that are trained for one or two races a year. And that's why everyone's doing it. No? Right. Well, I don't know. How do we bring it back? We need the likes of bastion trainers. Like last year, Venetia Williams was running a very good horses in handicap company. It paid oh. off for her, didn't it? Oh, we need people with balls, don't we? We need yeah. another Paul Nichols come along with Courtois Star. Run him six times. Yeah. I could have gone plenty of places with that. I'm going to move on. Uh, all right, um, Cheltenham. It, it, is it still all about Cheltenham for the punters as well? We, did you see any any post money yesterday after Cheltenham, for example? We had the Sharp Novice, which is usually right at the November meeting. That was yesterday. Yeah, we uh, introduced my mate Mosley, uh, 33, uh, for the Arkle. But there'll be 33 better horses surely <laughs> turn up between now and then. And well, 33 pence it. went on it, did it? Yeah, there was uh, there was no interest at 33. Um, well, the, following on the back of the uh, the big jump off, the the big mover was factor file of Willie Mullins that he's going chasing. There was very you know, a few requests here and there for uh, horses, but the the horse that actually moved significantly in price was him. Um, obviously, second in the bumper, they think the world of him going chasing. Uh, that was the one with serious money, twenty five into ten. Something that you told me that was remarkable this morning, that when the anti-postman, Robbie Wilders, who will be coming on this show eventually down the line, puts up one of his mail shots, it's a flurry of activity, isn't it? I was astonished to hear that. It is. We see the, the scrollers will uh, they'll light up um, with the customers following Robbie Wilders' selections, as I'm sure we'll get on to uh, in the first race uh, at Cheltenham. Uh, his tip early in the week is near enough halved in price from what it uh, originally was anti-post. So. We're not living in a good time, lads, are we? It's, it's, it's wild as world, and we're all just living in it. That's it's crazy. It's fair to him. He's, he's anti-postman. He's, he's come up with some decent big price winners in that. So you do that, you get a following. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Robbie will be on shortly, but we've got the lads that here. Right, it's time for the first feature. Shall we indeed, Head? As we will be doing every week, it's time for Live to the Tracks. At least, at least I think it is. I was going to say, it's live for Time to Tricks. Oh, jeez. We can now go to the town more, and one of the best in the game, David Carr. Known to us here at the Racing Post as Broadband for his speed and accuracy, is in the press room. David, welcome along to the Morning Post. Good to speak to you. I should just say Broadband does often break down, so <laughs> I'm not entirely certain about the, that nickname. We should. Uh, it was Bruce Millington from a long, long time ago. It would probably be fibre speed now, or whatever it is. Uh, David, first and foremost, if they were betting on this yesterday, being on or not, it would have been carnage, right? But around about 2 p.m. yesterday, the weather gods started turning in our favour. Thank goodness this card is on. Well, I must admit, I was always pretty confident. Speaking to the course after they pulled off yesterday's meeting, there was one bad area on the straight. But they knew if you could rail that off and not have to race on that, they reckon unless the heavens opened again, uh, they should be OK. And, and that's what's happened. So, I mean, I set off this morning expecting to be racing and, and, I'm, and I'm glad to be here. I haven't looked at the going stick so far, David, but uh, I imagine it's going to be pretty low. I mean, I don't even know why they bothered inspecting at Newbury yesterday for today. That was 3.1. I don't think I've ever seen it that low. <laughs> uh, but it's, yeah. it, it's going to be proper Jack Dexter weather, isn't it? Where's old Jack Dexter when you need him? Well, it is, but I don't know if you remember 12 months ago, everyone was bemoaning how awful the ground was, and I don't know, this Aidan O'Brien hot pot, they might not run at the ground speed testing. They let it run, and August Rodin, he won, and things didn't turn out too bad for him, did they? No, quite, absolutely. I mean, he, he, he's on the slide, he's the big boost for us at the minute at William Hill. Uh, I, I think there's been you know, loads of money for everything else in the race base. He was starting off with loads of sprint handicaps. It's hard to know where they're going to go, David, on the track. I guess if you're betting, you'd say down the middle in the opener? I, I would have thought so, yes. I mean, it's only a six-runner race to start with and then we're off with a big race, so we don't know. 
I, I think attempting to, to analyse the race through second guessing where the jockey's going to go isn't the, the route to riches, I don't think. I think, I think the, the lucky thing is we've got three potentially real, real good quality of horses in a race that's got an amazing recent history. So I think we're set there for a decent contest. If you were going to plump for one, David, before I ask you about what the sun looks like at the minute out there. I would have thought the way they're betting on I mean, you mentioned about the, the slight changes this morning. I just, I still think this dancing Gemini has been underestimated, uh, possibly because he's Tremor Roger Tier and ridden by uh, Lewis Evans, neither of whom is household names as far as Group One races against. He was very good here last time. I think you can be pretty confident he'll relish the ground. And Diego Velasquez mentioned wisdom. Their form's better, but it's 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 margin. It's not enough to justify how, how much longer price he is than those two are. All right, David, as you're looking out the window, what are the skies doing? It's clearing. It's been very misty driving down from Leeds this morning. It's clearing up a bit now. I didn't pack my suntan lotion, and I don't think I'm going to miss it. But it's going to stay pretty much dry, and we're going to get through the card. We kick off, of course, at 1.35, all the way up to... 5.28. I'm still getting used to these crazy race times, David. That's why I'm checking out the app. But you like one in the last. The 5.28 is well worth waiting for, no matter whether you've had a winning or a losing day. There's a horse in there called Bobby Shah. He won this race three years ago. Didn't race last year. Didn't race the year before. Came back at Newcastle in May. Uh, birthday blood vessel. They didn't run very well. Not raced since. Uh, I was looking at this yesterday. He's a very well-handicapped horse. When I was looking at this race yesterday afternoon, it was an 80 to 1 shot. I got sidetracked, came to a bit half an hour later, he was into 11 to 1. Somebody clearly thinks he's back to the form he showed when he won this race three years ago. John Wainwright, the trainer, has had his best season for 15 years. So something's going right in the yard as well. Now, I'm not saying for one moment Bobby Shark is any sort of good thing, but he's a fascinating contender. People have been backing him at 81 into 11 to 1. He's definitely well handicapped, he definitely goes in the ground. It makes the last race well worth waiting for. I love it. Broadband speaking in the third person, because I know that's your money, David, 100%. <laughs> Great stuff, David. Thanks for setting us the scene. We look forward to all your breaking news throughout the day. Cannot wait to see who's going to be crowned in the futurity and Bobby Shaft taking out the last. There you go, then. All right. As you can see, the producers were having their breakfast, I think, when I went to that link as well. It's their first go. It was it seamless, wasn't it? It was seamless, absolutely, like a lot of the stuff me and you mm. do. Um, Bobby Shaft. You're seeing support for that, aren't you? We are. Eight from 12, little bits and pieces. I hope it, uh, hope it stays longer than a mile, because it'll need to in this ground. And people are flocking towards that boost horse as well, aren't they? Yeah, Diego Velasquez, three to one. You'll get it while it's there until half 11. All right, OK. Three's interesting. Nah. All nah, right, OK. Did, not me. Save it, save not it, save me. it. All right, thank goodness Donny is on. Absolutely fantastic, isn't he? We get to see that group one. Get your tips in for the previews coming up. This is where we start ramping up the show. Who fancies a trip to Cheltenham? It's again, let's stick with Live to the Tracks. Right to Presbury Park we must go. And West Country correspondent here at the Racing Post, James Stevens joins us on the line. Steve-O in the press room. Yeah, that's right here, ready to go this morning. Set the scene, buddy. Uh, just before we talk about yesterday's racing, Jumps is back at the home of it. Uh, what's the skies doing currently as you can see them? Yeah, it's been dry the night. Um, we had, yesterday we were told there would be no rain at all, but just as we went to the paddock, it hailed down twice. So it was pretty wet and miserable at times yesterday. But it's been dry since. Uh, nice, nice sort of overcast morning, uh, but rain is on the way later this afternoon, John Pullins told me. Well, hang on a minute. What do you mean rain's on the way? How much rain's on the way? A uh, bit less. It's not going to be too um, detrimental, I don't think. It's going to be later in the afternoon, so sort of three, four o'clock, a um, couple of mils. But racing, most of racing would have taken place by then, so hopefully not too much difference there. Your professional reputation hangs on that word on your debut here on the Morning Post, Steve-O. All right, you were there yesterday. Emotions were running high. Yeah, I have to say it was a pretty brilliant day yesterday. Um, real good feel, good factor around Cheltenham. And three quite incredible stories. I mean, first up, we had Nigel Tristan Davis, who had the very sad loss of I Like to Move It and won with the same connections. He was close to tears. Neil King was even closer after Look Away won a horse he'd sort of always fought the world of, and he's finally delivered now. Um, impressive enough, winner of the, the big grade two, which has moved, the, moved for that meeting for the first time yesterday. And then, of course, we had um, we had Mole Court, which um, was really quite moving, actually. Ben Pauling really struggling to speak to us after the race with the owners, or part owner's um, wife, 
very, very ill and, according to the trainer, doesn't have long left. So to see that horse go and win at Cheltenham and, and produce a pretty spectacular performance, a fourth win this season, um, yeah, really special scenes for all involved. And, yeah, a pretty moving day, actually, at Cheltenham. So, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. Doing what only the jumps game can. Yeah, it was great to witness from afar, that's for sure. Let's concentrate and hone in on the action. Uh, of course, you are the West Country correspondent. As I've mentioned, you've napped one today. I have indeed, yeah. And we are third on the naps table, Dave. So <laughs> we are um, getting a bit dizzy up here, I'm afraid. But um, we've gone for, hopefully, straightforward, Blue King Duoro in the Maston's Holding Hurdle. I mean, it's a race I, I previewed for the post yesterday. And it's, it's a lot it's a lot weaker than we've had in recent years. I mean, last year we had Knight Salute and Pied Piper who'd served up a friend in a grade one turning up. But here we've got a 138-rated horse who'd been seen in handicaps who sets the standard. Um, look, he's £9 clear on ratings. The Paul Nichols yard is firing. Hopefully it's pretty straightforward, Dave. I'll, I'll tell you what, I backed uh, the horse that was second to it. It was beaten yesterday on its return, wasn't it? I forget his name now. Affidil. And, yeah, Affidil. I backed him at Ascot last season. I couldn't believe this thing just kept going. Uh, massive chance there for you. All right, you're tipping a five to four shot. No wonder you're at the top of the naps table. We've got a fascinating novice chase coming up, haven't we? Stairs Erdl, Jewel Stairs Erdl win a floor in Porter against We've All Been Caught. Can't wait for that. But what about the bumper? Is there any dark horses being mentioned? The Irish are coming over again. Well, I mean, we're looking at the race and your eyes are immediately drawn to Willie Manners, isn't it? Because we know what he can do in bumpers. Listen, I've heard very good things about the Campbell Brewery. Um, cost quite a lot um, when he was bought as a, as a three-year-old and impressive enough winner. Of course, look, he's got to pretty much give quite a bit of weight to, over, to all bar one. But he's a horse I've heard some really good things for, so I'm looking forward to seeing him. And I mean, that novice chase, Dave. I mean, this is 20 grand to the winner. We hear all the time about lack of opportunity, Lack of prize money. We've got a race here. 20 grand. Good jumping ground. Only one British trainer's turned up. What can you do? Uh, well, there we indeed, absolutely. What long, can you do? Long live the jumps game. Long winter ahead, say some. But we absolutely love it. I think that's going to be a great matchup for sure. Cannot wait to see. I think Gav Cromwell's going to be set for another great day. You've given us your nap. You've set the scene. We look forward to reading your reports throughout the afternoon. Steve Oak, go well. Best of luck today. Marvellous. All right, there you go. That was a better link, wasn't it? There you go. They're waking up as well. Wakey, wakey, wakey. Well, welcome along if you just joined us here. This is the Morning Post. It's the inaugural edition. Welcome. You're happy with that? Okay, what have we got on screen? Uh, what have we got? Keels. Who can read this? Let's see this. Uh, the way these trainers are... Yes, yeah, we're basically agreeing with you. One of the first comments coming in, uh, basically. Paul Nichols, an exception, to be fair to him. What do you make of that comment, Kills? Well, obviously he agrees with me, so I agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you yeah. do sort of yeah, agree I mean, with Kills, don't you, about this fear of missing Cheltenham? But you, you are right in what you're saying. It, 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 you know, you run your horses, and then you'll get one that's been primed for the day. It's putting people off, isn't it? Yeah, but it doesn't just happen at Cheltenham. This is the, my point. You know, it happens all, all year. Like you get horses that are primed for other races, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. You know, there'll be how many horses in two weeks' time are going to be primed for the Paddy Power yeah. Gold Cup? That is their Gold Cup. And we'll talk about races later where there might well be horses who are primed for that race. So it's not just Cheltenham where these horses are being primed for. It's I think they are being primed, but just lots of different races across the year. And as a result. The race is not very competitive because of that. You could talk about the Betfair Chase, for example, couldn't you? Which, which of course, you're, let's just get it out of the way. You've been, you've been talking about your, your favourite horse in training protector out again. But that is well, potentially his FA Cup final, I would say it's quite my favourite, but I mean, it's the race he's most likely to win. But he will be running in Gold Cups. He will, he will have, have other runs. It's just that he, is, he has shown himself to be an early season horse. He does like heavy right. ground. Hold on, hold on. I wasn't protector out the horse a couple of years ago that didn't run all season before running in the Gold Cup. Now you're saying how great he is. He ran in the... There was one year where, where I, I, he I'm didn't not... run like from March till December. Oh, hang on a minute. Or December to March. Hang on a minute. I'm not picking out an individual horses. When it comes to punting horses, it's completely different. I profit from them like anything else. I don't like the fact that the horses are raced like that these days. It's a different thing altogether. But if I want to make money out of having a bet on one, then, I, then, then I'll look at it. His race is the Betfair chase for, just, for the simple reason that others aren't going to be ready for it. Others, others in the antipost market were never, ever going to turn up. Jerry Colomb has been Fatal's favourite for ages. He was a million to one to ever come across uh, to, to run in that race. Uh, it's one of those things where the media sticks a mic in front of Gordon Elliott uh, at the end of the last season, where would he go? Would he go with the Betfair chase? Oh, yeah, what's that? Yeah, we think about that. Bookmakers stick him in his favour. Not a prayer in hell he was ever going to go there. He isn't. He goes to damn well. 
Uh, and given the state of the ground across the country, right, you're only going to end up with four runners in the race. Yeah. And none of them will have the class of protector act because I wouldn't be surprised if Paul Nichols says no to, to Bodeman's game as well. So, talking about punting, that horse was three to one a few weeks ago. He's going to be even money. We're going to be having a look at some anti post uh, prices for you a little bit later on. That's a feature on the show as well. And it will be a Cheltenham race, but not in March. So, stick around for that as well. James Stevens is a good judge, James, as the Naps table will tell you. He's gone for Blue King Daru in the Masters and at Cheltenham. That's the second race. Uh, you don't fancy it, do you? No, we, when discussing this race with the team uh, on Thursday, we thought Blue King Drew was a favourite that is beatable. Um, you know, a race full of four-year-olds, any kind of improvement from the previous season. At that kind of price, uh, we're happy to stand him. Um, we'll be top six to four for the remainder of the show. So if you fancy Blue King Drew, we'll be six to four. Lucinda Russell has a runner in that. She's the latest William Hill ambassador, guys. It's, it's, it's hard to think. I, I was thinking about this on the way in this morning as I was walking through beautiful London city and the skies were clearing. I could just, I was picturing all of her horses today. We'll get on to Corrett Rambler. We're going to hear from Lucinda in a minute. Is it, is there a more popular stable out there anywhere at the moment than Lucinda Russell and yeah, Pete's Willie Mullins. No, more popular. <laughs> yeah, Willie Mullins. No, more popular. You know, feel good. Come yeah, on, Willie man. Mullins. No, 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 I'm not no, having no, no, that. He's I'm the most popular trainer around. No, he no, is no. the most popular it, trainer Everyone around. loves no Lucinda Russell's, don't they? Of course they do. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Do. I think at the moment she is the most popular for me. I mean, she's great. She's the only, Everyone's British, a, the only yeah, British trainers that win the Grand National in the last eight years. There was a stable last week, wasn't there? And the press went down there. And already people are moaning about it, aren't they? And, you know, yeah, it's, no, but he's still it's the, the same still old, the... same old. This is a progressive burgeoning stable. Yeah, 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 the, the, They've got yeah, Grand National winners. Yeah, They've got Gold Cup horses coming through. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's nothing wrong with Lucy in the Russell. It's a great yard, right? And she is the only trainer, the only British trainer that's won a Grand National in the last eight years. And she is very popular. But there's only the, the most popular yard around is Willie Mullins. I, th I think got I saw a tweet question, right? the other day. Oh, here we go. All right, fair enough. All right, just because I've gone your fear of missing Cheltenham. I saw a tweet the other day saying, send them all to Lucinda, which I think is perfect, right. isn't it? Yeah. She's having, she's she's spending 30 grand on something out of an Irish point, and it's going and absolutely hosing up, you know, landing the odds for punters out there. Punters absolutely love her. She's got a, potentially a grand national horse that we're going to hear about in a minute that could do what Noble Yates didn't quite manage to do last season and, and have a serious say in the Gold Cup. Um, I don't know. It, it, her and Pete Skew at the moment, I think it's absolutely fantastic. She's your latest ambassador, isn't she? She is, yeah. With, uh, great content and um, great to hear about the stable stars uh, representing the UK and uh, putting them to Willie Mullins, hopefully come March. You've done your advertising bit, Johnny. It's all good. <laughs> right, we spoke to the great woman at Cheltenham yesterday. She's got runners absolutely everywhere. Let's check this out. So, Lucinda, first of all, how has Giovinco come out of the Carlisle race where he unseated? Oh, I'm so relieved to say he's absolutely perfect. Um, obviously, it's a real worry when they unseat and run loose afterwards, but uh, he's absolutely fine. I think he had a little scrape on the inside of his hind leg, but he's fine. I thought he travelled fantastically, jumped beautifully, um, and it was just a, just an obviously mistake. Just uh, stumbled on landing and poor Stephen fell off. But uh, look, it's not going to stop us from... Uh, Continuing the way that we are, I still think he's going to be a wonderful chaser and um, we'll continue the plan for the rest of the season and try and uh, get him into a nice novice chase at the end of the season. Obviously everyone wants to know about Corrick Rambler, we'll come on to that in a second. It's been a great start to the season, you've got some interesting news about Ahoy Senor as well. Yeah, so Ahoy Senor we know is the most amazing talent, he's got a great engine and stuff, but sometimes um, it's funny, if you, if you watch him in his races, he'll change his legs just about five or six strides out change onto the right leg and, and that makes him jump slightly right-handed and it always means that he loses a little bit of uh, ground at his fences and this has been picked up a few times anyway um, this season um, about oh I don't know I'd say about six weeks ago um, he was a little bit unlevel in front and our vet looked at him and checked him and he found a little issue with the cartilage in one of his uh, front feet so we've medicated that and uh, it was just amazing we, we schooled him about five days ago and he jumped straight for the first time ever he's jumped straight now look I don't know, is he going to translate that to fences in, in, a, in a chase, in a race? I don't know, but if he does, uh, he's going to save a lot of ground. And um, yeah, no, we're really, really excited about him. I'm hoping that he'll make a, make a debut at Weather Bay as long as the ground's okay. He might go there next weekend. Um, and then that will lead us on to the, to the um, race at Newbury, the Coral Gold Cup. And how was Kurt Rambler's summer? 
Uh, Karit Rams has had a great summer. I think he's uh, enjoyed being a, a winner and uh, enjoyed the adoration and the pats and the carrots, and especially from Skew, who seems to spend a lot of time uh, with, with with him. So um, he's had a great summer. He runs today at, at Kelso, as everyone knows, makes his comeback. Um, I think it's pretty, uh, shows where I am in the pecking order that Skew stayed at Kelso to look after Corrick rather, rather than coming down to Cheltenham to be with me. But um, look, it's it's lovely to have him back. We'll hope that he comes home safe. That's his main image, main, main issue. And uh, I just want him to come back. And after that, we can make a bit of a plan. We could go to the Betfair Chase. That could be something to do to step him up in class. Yeah, is that where, have you got a plan as such right now? Or is it a bit of a wait and see with Corrick Rambler? It's quite funny because I think this time last year we hadn't even really thought about the Grand National for him. So um, I'm got, not getting myself too wound up about it. We're going to we'll have a look at Haydock, the Betfair Chase. If he runs well today at, at Kelso, if not, we might change that plan and think of something else. But uh, at the moment, um, it's just to let's let's get him home safe from today. You've got a lot of ammunition today. Let's start with Bois Gilbert in the 150 at Cheltenham. What can you tell us about the chances? Uh, this is a lovely horse. He, we bought him as a two-year-old in France as a, as a store horse. Uh, he was in training for a full year and at the end of that year we did a few of these junior bumpers. We did one junior bumper at, at Aintree and then we went on over hurdles with him and he learned so much. He won two of the junior hurdles. Um, it was an ideal introduction. They don't seem to go that quickly in them and uh, he learned his trade and then he came out this season. He had a handicap mark of 116 I think and um, we popped him into a handicap and he, he, he won nicely. So. Um, I still think there's a bit more improvement in him. Look, he faces a stiff task today. There's a, he's got to find a, quite a lot of uh, improvement to, to beat the top horse. And, um, but, you know, he, he's a horse that has got improvement. He's only a four-year-old. He's very strong. He's, he's here at Cheltenham already and um, had a little canter out this morning. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to running him and seeing where we are with him. And away from Cheltenham, is there anything else that we should be looking out for? Yeah, at Kelso, we've got quite a few runners at Kelso. Quite a lot of them are making their debuts. We've got some nice novices. Uh, there's a horse in the chase, uh, the female chase called Dom and Louis. Um, he loves it around Kelso and has got a bit of chasing experience behind him, so uh, he might be one to look out for. And Keith Ness in the handicap, although he's top weight, uh, we're using Patrick to claim three pounds off him, so he'd he'd have a little squeak as well. Lover, great stuff. We'll be hearing loads from Lucinda going on this winter. Oh, Barry Geraghty coming on the likes. Um, the most popular trainer in the game in talking Britain. to us there. <laughs> you're revising it now, I love it. I've seen someone on Twitter saying you're talking garbage. You yeah. that was out there. I'm, I'm, a sh I, I, I'm putting that down as one of the uh, fear of missing Cheltenham ones because it is almost uh, a complete split on Twitter. 40% you're talking garbage, Keely. 40% you're right, 20% abuse, which is what you normally get when it comes to Twitter. <laughs> Mention of Corrett Rambler there. Uh, you've tipped against him today, just before I go to Johnny on that. Yeah, I mean, this was one of the cases, Johnny, and I, 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 and I think this is uh, where bookmakers, oh, Grand National winners coming, Grand National winners coming out, obvious favourite, stick him in, fight it for. Uh, and, you know, let's not take into account that he's nearly a stone higher than he was when he won the National. Yeah. He's tailed off first time out last season. I mean, uh, five to four, I'd have been laying them all day long. Uh, Empire Steel's the tip, isn't it? Yeah, tip Empire Steel. Punters obviously agree, though, don't they? Because he's gone on yeah. a massive walk. Yeah, five to four, we can't give him away. Last time I checked, it was three to one. Um, so clearly expecting to come on massively for the run uh, in preparation for the uh, Betfair chase. But if you do think he can win today, he's 12 to one to win today and the Betfair chase, which is, again, on our specials. Uh, Part of the sides. We've got to speed up a bit, but nice to hear about some of our old favourites, of course, Ahoy Senor coming out. Did anyone see Carlisle this week? We were talking up in the big jump off a Giovinco. He came out, didn't he? Uh, a good risk at all. We're going to be talking about Sam Thomas a little bit later on the show. He can do no wrong at the moment. It was a carbon copy of Ahoy Senor, wasn't it? On his chasing debut at Carlisle. Yeah. Sadly, he came, he's got a little cut, but they reckon he's okay. But don't not let that put you off. He yeah. went on and won oh, a great one. He's going just as well as the winner, but oh. you know, wasn't the winner a Surprisingly jumped well, given how clumsy he was over hurdles. Horrendous, but Sam Thomas can oh, do yeah. no wrong. We're yeah, talking absolutely. about one of his ex-horses coming up now. Shall we finally get on to the big race previews on this Saturday, then? You've heard Lucinda giving you tips along the way. But we've got to start off at 1.15 at Cheltenham. It's this two-mile handicap where we can see horses that have won it over the years go up and running Tingle Creeks and things like that. Is there something as classy in this year's edition? I will get the lads a verdict on this after Johnny gives us a rundown on the market all about Robbie Wilder's nap in the week it is Alex Dezobo everyone thinks he's uh, a good thing here off 146 he was touted for uh, Cheltenham before a little setback ruled him out last year we were 4-1 to one in the week uh, and Robbie Wilder's put him up on his column 
and we saw plenty of money into five to two. It was solid five to two, eleven to four this morning, not being knocked over, but uh, that's the one we don't want from an anti-post point of view. What about uh, before midnight? That's that's the big mover today. So we put that in fifteen to two on Thursday when the market went back out, and there's been uh, plenty of support for that, and I can really can really see why. It's Henry de Bromed's birthday, so happy birthday Henry if you're watching. Rachel Blackmore comes over for a couple of rides uh, dancing on my own. Uh, the Irish horse has been easy to back in this haven't they? Yeah I, I personally couldn't see dancing on my own winning off that kind of mark. Um, maybe a campaign looking to Aintree or Cheltenham the back end of the year again uh, but it wouldn't be for me there. All right, OK, this is live and interactive. The trading floor is reacting to this as we go. Get your comments in. You can get them into Kills. You can get them into Johnny. You can even get them into G-Rod, believe it or not, as we're going. That's what the beauty of this is. Uh, this opener then, two-mile handicap. We've seen some really good horses over the year in this. But you're going for one of the previous winners. Yeah, I just think before midnight has become very interesting in your handicap. He's a pound lower than when he won it by six lengths two years ago. He absolutely bolted up that year. And obviously he ran so well afterwards that he basically handic handicapped himself out of last season. But he's come right back down. He's got a young lad on it, uh, Ben Sutton, who is the owner's son. Yeah. Uh, had plenty of success in the point of point mm -hmm. field. Has looked, you know, particularly over hurdles so far. He's, I don't think he's had a chase winner yet under rules, but you know he has looked very decent. He takes seven pound off at a very low weight. Fergal O'Brien gave him a run over hurdles at Chepstow and he ran almost as well as he ever has done in that sphere and on heavy ground, which is just not for him. So all conditions are perfect now. Should be all right for him this, because he, he went well for a long way first time up on that heavy ground and just, he, but it, yeah, it screamed yeah, like yeah, this was yeah, a prep Yeah, trainer run, said he just wanted to get the first yeah. out of him. All right, G. Yeah, I, I agree with Kills here. Um, I was there when he won a couple of years ago before midnight. He absolutely hammered them there. I think he was running off a mark of 136. He's run off 135, so he's one pound lower. And he's clearly been laid out for the race, hasn't he? I mean, he's had that spin over hurdles. He's trained by Fergal, who we know loves winners at this meeting, this time of year. And he's just really well handicapped. We know he likes the track. He's sure to run well, isn't he, before midnight? Yeah, he is. Now, what's putting you off this fad then? There was talk about Haddock's desire going to the Arkle, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, no, there's nothing putting me on. He's the, one that, he's the one that could blow it apart. He could be miles better than his handicap mark. We don't know, though. I mean, it's a long while since he's run. He's obviously had his issues. Uh, it was very soft ground when he was when he was very impressive. It's it's quicker. Trainer says he wants uh, he wants a bit more cut. So, you know, I, I've, I've, I've nothing against him as as a horse going forward. I just thought at these weights. Uh, and, the, and the fact that yeah. he's had a run before midnight, he was one for me. I've always got it in my mind, Dave, with with Gary Moore as well, like Ascot, Sandown. I know he has winners at Cheltenham, and he, I think he's two for eighteen or something. What's that front running chase? His name for, uh, editor de Gite. Is this the new yeah. editor de Gite? He's well, going to ping off and go. And... Go back and watch editor de Gite. I think it was in this race it last was. season. He held him up, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So see what happened there. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. And there's the a warning. Whether, yeah, yeah, I think Gary Moore said something like, well, "Whether we can make the run in today or not, I'm, I'm not sure." Yeah, yeah. and he went yeah. one second yeah. time out, didn't he? Everyone was expecting him to go on. I remember speaking to Gary after that, and he said the handicapper almost pulled me in about that. You know, well, you know, his first run, all that sort of. Anyway, all right, fascinating race coming up. A word on not long till May. We're going to be talking about the Paddy Power Gold Cup next month later on. All eyes on this chat. He's seen support, hasn't he? Yeah, he's really solid in the market. It's the class angle here. I mean, he's a really good jumper. Just um, going back to the Haddox de Zobo point there, not long till May and dancing on my own will all want to make the running. So that, could that potentially could inconvenience Haddox de Zobo as favourite. Uh, but you, I'm not sure with uh, not long till May whether this is a prep run for Paddy Power Gold Cup yep. or today is the day, but he's a really quick, really good jumper um, and really solid in the market, about 8-1. to one. I'm looking at that Turner's form from last season. It was a funny run race, wasn't it? He was up there in second throughout, but I still think he's a good horse in the making. This Adam Wedge won the last race there yesterday. You're shaking your head. Look, we haven't got really time to debate it, but you, you're not on him at all. So you, you think that was a complete falsifier, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah all right. Yeah. Well, we'll find out today, all right? And, Lauren Morgan, seriously good trainer. All right, shall we get our wellies on and go out to Doncaster for the first time? It is the final group one of the season. It's the Futurity. And it's been all about, Johnny, hasn't it? This supplemented ancient wisdom for Godolphin. We were chatting, boys, weren't we, beforehand? It's very unusual to think of a Godolphin runner in this. It's hard to go back and remember anything they've run in it. Kills is not the, often the MO, is it? Uh, no, it's not. I mean, they obviously think he's come out really well. I mean, my, my issue with him... I suppose would be that he's run a huge number two weeks ago. Uh, they said it was soft ground. I mean, some of the time gurus were saying it was nearer good than soft. Yeah. 
uh, and this is going to be absolutely bottomless. It's a bit, it's a quick turnaround for horses. Yeah. Run big, even though it looked easy. All right, so you're not sure about him. Uh, I'm going to put this question out to the floor because we love a bit of trivia here on the Morning Post. What was the last Godolphin horse to run in the Futurity? Let us know. You mentioned Casimero, didn't you? A Casamento. Casamento, but Ooh, that was a shake, 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 Ma <laughs> shake Mohammed from Mike Halford, yeah. I think. All right, okay. Not quite that. All right. Uh, give us a set of the market then. You can't have this good thing from Bally Doyle, according to everything on paper. He's been drifting. August Rodan stank last year and still won, didn't he? But Diego is the boost. Have you seen just one-way traffic for the yeah. other horse? Or? Uh, not particularly. From Monday, uh, when he was supplementary, we added him at 7-4. to four. There has been some support. Um, but the, the support since the market went out a few weeks ago was all about Diego Velasquez. Um, and we're still we're happy to take him on on this kind of ground, and we'll be happy to take on Ancient Wisdom as well uh, around the five to four, eleven to eight mark. Uh, some little theory coming out from Charlie Appleby horses with really big performances at the Rolling Mile. Can they produce that elsewhere and at this kind of price uh, on this ground? I think the front two are beatable here. I think it's good. There's a turn up all turn up in this race. All right, let's see if G can provide one. Yeah, I, I agree with Johnny. I just don't know what horse is going to provide it. But you look at those at the top of the market. And Godolphin just don't train many winners at Doncaster at <laughs> this time of year. I think he's one for 20, I had a look at, at Charlie Appleby's record at Doncaster in the month of October. So we don't really um, pigeonhole his Dubawi type horses as heavy ground sloggers do we mm. they're the sort of horses who glide round royal ascot on quick ground aren't they they're not they're not heavy ground sloggers in his speaking. saturday column a couple of weeks ago our dear friend uh, johnny Deneen said he was absolutely taken by ancient wisdom was looking out for the derby oh, thinks that's his idea of the winner I, I could, he could still win the derby and, and blow out here couldn't he because so why, he was so, so why not just put him away and have a lovely winter it's group one mm. he's only won a group three so far he's shown very good form and he's five to four so uh you know, there are obvious reasons. We're trying to find reasons why we can knock him down, but he's the yeah. one to beat. I mean, we do, we do, uh, we do associate Aidan O'Brien's horses with slogging through the mud at Doncaster. Despite the fact that Aidan comes on every time and says, and this says, is City of Troy Mark II, isn't it? Deja vu. You know, we're worried about the ground. Well, he, has to, that, he has to say that. He has to say that because nobody wants to go to a mud like side, do they? No, exactly. He has to say, oh, this is a beautiful mover. We're not sure he wants you know, yeah. this sort of ground, blah, blah, blah. But even on form, is his form that good? I mean, he, you know, he beat Capulet, but Capulet got hammered, didn't he? Yeah, but the he? third but, and the uh, fourth one group races next time. Yeah. I, I think the three to one, uh, but he's, he's my tip in the race. Darcy, I think he'll just win. We haven't mentioned Dancing Gemini. Absolutely ran away with a race. I love this horse, but I don't know if he's going to outstay these guys' kills. I do and, love this horse. I mean, he's by Camelot. There's no reason why he isn't going to stay. He, yeah, was, he was powering yeah. clear. That Flying Scotsman, which, which was won by the greatest horses ever lived, according to Reigns, uh, uh, Frankel, so they can come on and do this, of course. He had that one after a furlong, didn't he? He was just it's sublime. He was just countering you know? all over him. So, so that tells you, one, he's got no issues at all with soft ground. Two, he stays very well. Three, he's very good. Is this the tip? Uh, yeah, he is. Right. On Racing Post ratings, he's ahead of Diego Velasquez, behind Ancient Winston, but there's not much between the three of them. Uh, and he's a much bigger price. Gee, what's the tip? Are we hand in hand here? I don't know what's going to win this day, but I want to be against the front too. Uh, it could be a huge upset. I don't know what it's going to be. What did you put in the punter versus pro? I put Diego Velasquez, but that was on Thursday. Ah, now yeah. this is the beauty of this show, because this is why punters are watching, because you're allowed to change your mind, of course. The elements change, You get a bit they? of a feel, don't you, I find. The closer you get to a race, the more of a feel you get for the race, and sometimes you're forced to tip on a Thursday for, for things that are going in the paper on, on, on early in the week. And yeah. it's quite, you know, I people say never change your mind in racing, but I don't have a problem with changing my mind if I get in a different feel for the race closer to it. All right, so you're not sure. I don't know. I, I, That's I, fine. I, I just don't know. All right. Can't wait for Tom Siegel to come on the show next week. <laughs> Kills, dancing Gemini Dance all the way. Gemini. You're Dance taking on the front two? We're taking on the front two. My uh, token selection will be God's Window. I know it's got loads to find, but I thought it was really impressive on debut at Donny. Uh, the Gosdens know what they're doing with this type of horse. So they tend to, he, he don't they, be, Kills? 
He's going to be a group horse if John Gosden thinks he's good enough to run in this race first time out. Yeah, to All be right. fair, I, I did run some stats on, on Gosden. Like when he when he when he wrote, jumps them up from like novice races to group races, it's off the charts. It's really good. Is know, it? He knows what he's got. Yeah. I mean, the, the second from that maiden runs in this, and he's thirty-three to one, isn't he? So mm. I don't know. I'm not sure. Epitex is flying anyway. Ben this. Brookhouse, he trains that. Yes, he is. Yeah, red, yeah, yeah. Red Hot Whisper, isn't it? Is that oh, what it's yeah, called? Yeah, that's it. All right. Yeah. Thank you for plucking that one out there. That is the group one then, the final group one of the season. Thank goodness it is on. We'll be previewing more from Doncaster coming up. Let's get back to Cheltenham, shall we? I have to get the title of this name right, because it's a it's a William Hill sponsored race. It's the, of course, we're going up to the three miles now, aren't we? It's the epic jump season at William Hill Handicap Chase. Uh, wide open or? It is wide open. We're paying four places here, so we're giving uh, punters a little bit of extra value. So we reach way bets. Uh, the two money horses, uh, Lord Accord and Am I Right, and I can see the cases for both of them. Uh, Lord Accord won this last year and has quite clearly been prepped for another tilt at it. Uh, I think it's a pound higher. Uh, and Am I Right, they cl quite clearly think the world of this horse. Was it 11 to 2, the Irish National, it went off. I know it didn't run particularly well. Um, but those two have been backed by the rest of the field. Um, so, yeah, Lord Accord, Am I Right. Better come to you here, G, because it was what, a massive price earlier in the week. When it one of two horses that have been back right down. This is this is obviously you know all to do with the elements staying in its favour. Yeah, you've got a huge chance, hasn't he, Lord Accord? You you know you, like uh, Johnny said, he, he won the race last year. He's clearly been prepped up for it again. We showed all all of his best form early in the winter season, and then he tailed off towards the end, which has done him a favour because he's got back down to a nice mark. He's had that little prep run over hurdles, similar to before midnight. Yeah. Neil Mulholland absolutely loves this meeting. He's got a really good record at Cheltenham in October. I think he won this race. What was that horse that, that won loads and loads and loads of times? And then, then that midnight. Run the Gold Cup. Oh. Yeah. He won it. Didn't he? No, no, no. That's no the, he's still won it, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, again, he won it, help us out with that. He won there, it with Lord Accord, obviously, last yeah. year. So it just looks like a a huge chance to me, Lord Accord. But again, when I was looking at this race on Thursday night, we, we were looking at seven, eight to one. Yeah. And we are looking at four to one now. You know, so seven to two, by seven the way. Seven to two, so. All right, I'm okay. On you are on it. Uh, sadly, I'm not on it, no, but right, uh, okay. this is the underwhelming money is just for those front two, nothing else. I was kicking myself because on Monday I was doing the weekend and I'd come down to two that I like and it was under supervision and Lord Accord, they're both 14 to one. Why I didn't just put both of them up, I don't know. Why I didn't just back both of them, I don't know, but I haven't. Uh, the thing with Lord Accord, who's now just gone joint by the looks of it, is that, um, is that it was soft, it was good to soft, soft in places on Monday and there was, was unsettled weather forecast yeah. and all that. And now it's dried out to the ground he had last year. He's got to, he's got to have a great chance. I will say that last year's race, I backed the Wolf in last year's race, and he oh, ended up finishing... Confessions of a punter and, here. And he ended up finishing second, and it would it would be quicker to count the, the count the fences he didn't hit than the ones he did. But he does that, The race that, fell apart. Is just had a, so basically, the, for him to finish second, the race fell apart a little bit. I have a feeling this race might be a little bit better. And I do think there's a big race in under supervision. Yeah. If he gets his jump, I've got this thing... I. For some reason, I, I get drawn to horses that don't jump very well. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? But mm. he's he's won a Grimthorpe. He was second in it. He was second in it last year. But he's also run very, very well at Cheltenham. If you remember, he was he was given does he know a right race until Clyde with a row halfway up the run yeah. as a novice. He was third to Corrick Rambler. He was a as a novice when oh. he was giving that one a couple of pounds, and he was third last year to Eva's Oscar when he walked through the second last. And you thought he's 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 he's, he's booked for about seventh, uh, and he he ended up flying up the hill. So. I think if he gets his jumping together, he's got a massive player, but I am still kicking myself. I do, I do take the point about Lord Accord's last year win, right? But I don't think that his chance is solely based on his win last year, because I think that he did go on to prove in his subsequent starts. He went on to chase Frode on home. He was the only one really get anywhere near Frode on yeah, a wing Yeah, All right, let's talk about the horses that have been running this summer. And when we were coming into the office this morning, let, 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 let's be honest with the punters out there. That's why you're here, Johnny. Um, you you reckon half the fields here has got absolutely no chance, don't you? Well, it's these summer jumpers, they, they win small field races, um, they go up in the weights and then they turn up at Cheltenham and the big boys are here. Um, they won't be for me at all, so, you know, sort of twig, brief times, maybe quick draw. These kind of horses I'd be looking to take on. 
You went on I'll to name on. names there. I wasn't expecting you to do that. <laughs> we could all do that by whittling it down. So there you go. That's the idea from the bookmaker. All right, the trading floor is here with us every week from William Hill. And Johnny Simpson says, you've got to be on the class acts. One of my favourite horses in training runs here, Cananda Quaytu. Who, who is who looks tailor made for the national to me? He, he, he's he might be he might be you know not quite that level yet, but I think they've got every right the England. Well, he to might be have to go up a little bit but now yeah. now that we're down to thirty four runners for the match to, to start with. But he's a bit of a winning machine, isn't he? Yeah, I just don't know. He does his track. He has. I mean, he'd be one of Johnny's as well, wouldn't he? Because he had, did do his winning in you know, autumn last year and then spring this year. Yeah. Um, but he does a lot of winning. All right. I, I absolutely love him, but it's under super, supervision for me. You're Dutch in, are you? Or? No, I'm under supervision. All right, G? Lord Accord, yeah. Lord Accord? Lord Accord. The good Lord then to win it for a second year running. Let's get back up to Doncaster, shall we? It's the William Hill uh, Prospect Stakes. His listed race over six furlongs and again, mudlarks to the fore. Uh, what have we got for these two year olds then, Johnny? Uh, we've got the best backed horse of the day right here, Ballymount Boy, six to four from. I think it was seven to two when the market went out. Uh, I think the the punters have latched on to the fact that that standout piece of form, chasing Van Dijk at Goodwood, uh, is leagues apart from what anyone else has achieved here. I think you can complete throughout the form at Longchamp. I know it said good to soft, but it was good to firm really. Uh, he completely pulled his chance away, so you can just forget that. I think Ballard Mountain Boy will take the world to beat. You're ducking this one. Oh, we're not laying this one though. This is a favourite that we're we're not going to take on. Ooh, all right. Unlike, yeah, I think there's a Rick. I think there's a Rick in this market. I think everyone's thought all oh, matters most. Beaten out of sight on every ground last time. Uh, got no chance. Uh, the only reason he got beat last time in the Mill Reef, or he got beat so far in the Mill Reef, is because his jockey fought him for the first two furlongs and he pulled like mad and. You know, if he does that again here, we'll finish last again. But I mean, he showed the time before at Ripon yeah. that he wanted to get on with it. He was quick away, and if you've got a horse with that tendency, you might as well let him, especially if it's six furlongs. I mean, they're not going a mile and a half. Uh, and that run at Ripon was great. He was second to Task Force. Task Force came out, finished second in the middle park. Uh, the third finished third in a Group Two at Chanty. Uh, he was eight to one for the Mill Reef, which is a Group Two. He's nine to one for a listed race at Doncaster on the back of that defeat, which I think you can just throw straight out the window. He'd, showed, he'd shown um, promise on his first run on soft ground. I just don't think he should be anywhere near 9-1. to one. Matters most for Rafe Beckett. It's an unbelievable year with his two-year-olds, so prolific. Uh, only three fads have won this in the last 10 years. Johnny thinks it will be 4-11. and 11. Do you? No, I, I made it between two and the favourite was not one of the pair. Uh, one was Matters most, uh, who kills us just tipped. I came down on the other one, which was Al Shabab Storm, um, who was impressive when he won on soft ground in a good time at Goodwood last time. Uh, and I looked up the record of Andrew Balding at Donny at this time of year. It's very good. It's 30 odd percent, 10 for 33, which uh, you know falls is running on heavy ground at the end of the season. He's likely raced. He's only had three runs. A lot of these have had long seasons, and they matters most. A lot of runs. Uh, Bally Mount Boys had four or five. I think he's just unexposed. I think the last coming in at the right time. all had tons of runs. Yeah, but, possibly because of the heavy ground. And it never used to be. It never used to be the case either. A few years before that, it was all ones and twos. So I mean, it's it's cyclical, I suppose. I tell you, I have one golden rule. If I ever, when it comes to betting, if I'm tossing up between two horses, I back the one that's the biggest price. Mm, yeah. You ain't done that. No. <laughs> <laughs> a lesson to us all from Kiel's. <laughs> all right, OK. So what are you hoping that a matters most does? Just heavy ground, take him out the comfort zone. Let go. Don't off. fight him. I mean, if you fight a horse on heavy ground, he's got no chance whatsoever. I mean, the, matters most was beaten after 50 yards at Newbury. So just chuck that run out. Well, it's the bang in form Ross Orion aboard there. Johnny says... Be with the fab. The boys are taking it on. One more to come from Donny, but now it's a return to Cheltenham and it's a Potemps qualifier for you out there. And uh, the Irish are invading here. Uh, your nap's coming up here, isn't it? But we're, and, and you're being taken on by the Irish. But let's get the market up. We can see what, yeah, it's Bugs Moran, isn't it, for Noel Mead? Really consistent horse. Everything looks in place for a big run here. What price are you going? Uh, we're 9 to 2. I think it opened up 7 to 1 uh, on Thursday when the market uh, was put out. We're paying five places here um, instead of four, so giving the customers a little bit of extra value. Um, but yeah, this is this is too difficult for me. This um, six, seven to on the field. Um, we've seen the money for a, ra a vast array of horses. Uh, happy just to be competitive at the front end of the market and uh, let the punters make their mind up. 
Yeah, this is a this is a meeting as we saw yesterday again that the Irish do traditionally well at. You're basically, you know, it's, it, it's you versus the Irish. Well, I mean, I think they won this race for the first time last year. Uh, last Charles year, Burns, Charles wasn't Burns it? Yeah. Um, landed a massive gamble with shoot, shoot. first. Oh, God, blimey. Put him away for Cheltenham and never got there. Never got there. <laughs> Complete there waste. Oh, there we go. Complete All waste right. of six months. No money. Uh, yeah. No prize money. Uh, <laughs> the fourth in that race was Salvador Ziggy, who was actually second to good time, Charlie at Cheltenham, on his next start, so we never saw him again. Uh, and, you know, the one thing you have to look about it, 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 with these potential qualifiers is, you know, do, do they need to win to get into the final? Do they need to run it in the fourth? Because you can yeah. see some what we call eye catching runs, can't you? And I, yeah. You know, and for me, Paul Nichols is not the sort of trainer who's going to waste five months of the season by running Hugo's new horse into into fourth and then sticking him away for the week. That's just not the way he operates. And the horse himself is surely crying out for three miles. He's a half brother to Black Corton, uh, who won tons of three mile chases under under Bryony Frost for the stable, uh, and was you know a real high class horse as well. He's running near off one three two. He finished strongly in virtually every race he ran last year, apart from possibly the the EBF final on. But that was on bottomless ground at Sandown, and he and he was top weight, uh, and it was a you know it's, it's invariably a very good race. So I think he'll stay. I've also backed Esparza Rome, who's a lot shorter than 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 he was a couple of days ago. Mm. Um, he just got you know he's just a a former very high class novice chaser who missed a season, came back and showed a fair bit on his last two runs over hurdles. I thought he had a chance off his mark, but. You know, I, th I think if there's a horse that's got the potential to blow this race apart, it's still Hugo's new horse. I think this could, could, could go off Fav, G. It could, couldn't it? Yeah, I, I, um, this happens to me quite often, right? So I get an email saying, can you, can you give us a tip, please? Can you give us a tip, please, Jira, for, for, for Saturday? So then I give my tip and I write it, and then I get an email about two hours later saying, oh, kills a tip, that one. Can you change your one? <laughs> what? Yeah, it happens all the time. Seriously? Yeah. You're not the betting editor I, anymore, I, mate. I You're still <laughs> pulling rank. Why don't you tell them no? <laughs> so uh, Hugo's new horse was the horse that I, I tipped and then got the email to say that Kiel's had, uh, had actually selected it too. Um, and uh, similar to Kills, but I, I, I thought the runner air when, it, when he won, I thought that was a good race. Persian time, travelled beautifully into the race, looked like he was going to win, and then Hugo's new horse was very strong at the finish to come and ping him back. There was also in behind, I think, called Dalco Behu, which won yesterday yeah. over fences at the track. Uh, the third Huvari runs at Aintree on Sunday. I think it's a strong piece of form that. It was, it was a good time. Combined with a, a fast finishing sectional, and that's usually a, a, a sign that, that the race is strong. So I've had Hugo's new horse on my mind as horse to follow this season, and like Kiel said, I don't see any reason why Paul Nichols won't have him fully wound up first time out. See if he can go and do something over hurdles. If it works out, he might well stay hurdling. If it don't, he'll go chasing, won't he? The second most popular horse trainer in, in the world runs a couple in here. Willie Mullins, no one's even mentioning his horse is yet. We'll have ones on the sliders, and he's stinky. Yeah, I mean, Keels was mentioning the horses there who want to qualify for March. Now, that actually be a horse who was entered on Monday that's not actually declared that could be the one for Mullins. Ikea Alen was entered. Mm. And whether he's just having a little look to see what mark he gets, I don't know. JP McManus, you know, yeah. likes. What did he get? Did you remember a look? Uh, no. Unfortunately, <laughs> I've done half a job there. But I did see it was entered. Someone um, out there is going straight away. Don't oh, worry yeah. about it on the Racing Post website. You'll be out there. Yeah, uh, there are some sneaky ones in here, lads, though, as well, before we move on as well. Party business is interesting, isn't he? Yeah. He's been nibbled at. He has, yeah. 25 to 1 he was uh, early in the week. I think he's got a little squeak at the price. Yeah, I do. I do. Um, he won at Taintree, a couple of pounds higher, yeah. three That's miles. Boy, it was fourth in the at 100 to 1 two weeks yeah. ago. Uh, it, Ian Williams could not train a jump winner for whatever reason last winter for a long time. I think he's got some quite well handicapped individuals in his stable. This is probably one, I think. All right, OK, that's the last race that we're looking at at Cheltenham. Should we go up to Donny for the final time? It's the William Hill Farewell Flat Handicap. It's over five furlongs on terrible ground. Punters will be running for cover or going in for one at this point. If there is going to be a gamble in the race, Johnny Simpson? Uh, desperate hero. That was 15-2 to two when the market opened up. Now into 4-1. to one. Yeah, uh, Loads of support for that. Ross Orion again. Uh, the two that I thought were slightly overpriced, one of them just shortened up a touch there, is Manila Scouse and Count Dorsey for Tim Easterby. I thought they were probably drawn slightly on the wrong side of the track at Catterick. Um, they both love heavy ground, both are forward. I thought those two were uh, two to be with. 
Four's the field then. Oh, help me out here, guys. I mean, you've set out one. You've set out one. If I'm going to be at the bar, it'll be this one today. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a horrible race, isn't it? Like, you know what I mean? It's, you, know, you know the ground's going to be bottomless. They've all been running for ages. You know, some of them, uh, some of them will go, get through it and some of them won't. I, I will say that, you know, I mean, Count Dorsey is a very, very old favourite of mine. And, you know, for a horse that very rarely wins, I back him an incredible amount of times. But... Like, you know, he he was back to form last time. He did get squeezed out a little bit behind Vintage Clarence. He's out of the handicap here. He's won, has he been placing in Portland a couple of times? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? He loves bottomless ground. He loves Doncaster. He's an each way price. Uh, it will be, you know, if I'm having a bet, it will be the smallest one of the day. I say it's a horrible race, but four to one shot won it. Boundless power in 21. I'm looking down the race boys website <laughs> at last day. And fast response fast is a gambling. Last, I mean, yeah, 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 that was when he was on a roll. So we've had four to one, nine to two. Should we be looking yeah. ahead of the market here, Chief? You look at him? Oh, I thought the favourite would win, Desperate Hero. But he wasn't favourite again when I looked earlier in the week uh, on Thursday when I was supposed to send in these sips that I'm talking about. Um, he ran a fast time when he won at Nottingham recently. It was in heavy ground. We know he goes through the ground. Uh, Mick Channon had a pretty good record at this meeting when he was training. Jack Channon has obviously sent him up here. Uh, he's obvious, but I think he's the right fav. All right. There are your big race previews for this initial edition. Inaugural, call it what you want. It's the morning post. And there's the Saturday sizzlers, as you might call it. We've got Sunday still to come. Uh, I promise you an Irish angle each and every week. And everyone's favourite is waiting on the line. Let's go live, shall we, across the Irish Sea. DJ Dave Jennings is there. No, it's not everybody's favourite. It's only me. <laughs> well, all right, my favourite then in that case. I think people are going to be giving thumbs up and likes on the YouTube um, before, now, DJ. Before I begin, Dave, can I give you the answer to the three questions you were looking for? Icar Allen got a mark of 143, um, which I thought was very interesting. Dustin Run, and I think Johnny has hit the nail on the head there. He's won for your pretense final uh, come March. The last Godolphin horse to run in the, the Futurity Trophy. I think with one ruler who was sent off favourite the year, Max Swinney won it. And the Neil Mulholland horse was Midnight Chase. Ah, Big Midnight up. Chase. Well done, DJ. Happy days. Uh, DJ, great to have you along, man. Um, it's Galway over there, of course, this weekend, isn't it? We're not sure about Wexford tomorrow, are we? Uh, in what regard? That well, it will go ahead? There's an inspection, isn't there, I think? Yeah, I think there is, yeah. It's a lovely day here down with those today. We've been absolutely pummeled with rain all week but it's it's a, actually a fabulous day today i'm going to bring the kids to the playground it's that nice and uh i think we're going to be okay for all the meetings it, it's not a particularly high quality weekend in ireland obviously we've got down royal next weekend but this this meeting this bank holiday meeting in galway often throws up decent horses and today there's some decent races today some good horses running and tomorrow we've got the chasing debut of afferdale fury who was second in the albert Bartle last year to stay away Fay. and it's a race that noel mead targets every year he won it with harbour pilot would you believe 22 years ago he also won it last year with the devil's coachman the year before with six shooters so uh interesting that noel mead has chosen this particular race to unleash afferdale fury yeah three card brag one on the uh, on the meeting last year didn't it uh anything there today for the punters yeah, there was a couple I liked. Uh, an old friend of mine, and I'm sure, well, I say an old friend, he's actually turned into a bit of an enemy. Uh, I like Gabby's Cross in the handicap hurdle at 417. Look, he's an enigma, and he doesn't always do what you want him to do, but he's rated 120 over hurdles. Yes, 120. This is a 140 rated chaser who was fancied by many, including myself, to run well in the Grand National. That didn't materialise, but he's run off a mark of 120 today at Galway. He won the Blazers handicap chase last year at Galway. He likes the track. And uh, if he can't win a handicap hurdle of 120, there's something seriously wrong. But he, he is tricky. He does need luck and running. So he's certainly not one you could properly trust. But I think he's got a great chance. Couple of Irish winners at Cheltenham yesterday, unsurprisingly, DJ. Uh, what do you like there today? There's one in particular I know you're rather strong on. Yeah, I've been very strong all week on Am I Right? Uh, the, 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 the money has come. Um, I just think he's an unexposed, well handicapped chaser that has probably been targeted at this race for the last certainly couple of weeks. Anyway, I spoke to Henry de Bromhead yesterday for the previews, and the key thing with Am I Right is ground. He was backed into favouritism for the Irish National off a slightly lower mark, albeit, but uh, he got stuck in the mud that day. He's not going to get stuck in the mud at Cheltenham today. If you go back to the Grade One at Leperstown over Christmas, which was won by Gayard de Manil, he was travelling beautifully when he crashed against. Uh, 
uh, a horse ridden by uh, Jack Kennedy and gave Rachel Blackmore no chance and came down. But he would have been banged there. He would have been certainly in the first three that day, I think, if he hadn't have come down. He's run off a mark of 142 today. I have a feeling he's about five or six pound at least up his sleeve. He's a he's a strapping chaser who jumps well. And I just think he might just be a cut above this lot. And uh, the value is gone. Look, he's seven to two now. But uh, I thought all week he was he was a bit of value, about seven or eight to one. All right, there we go. Strong on that for birthday boy, Henry de Bromid. Uh, you've been doing your stable tours all over the place. I know that you've been talking a bit about some Cromwell runners, Antrim Coast goes today. And we've got Flooring Porter over fences. Yeah, we do indeed. Uh, it's interesting to see my old mate from up in the ante, Johnny Deneen, says Flooring Porter is the lay of the weekend. He can't have him on his mind. He thinks it's too late in life to go chasing with Flooring Porter. So that's interesting. Antrim Coast. On Antrim Coast, I spoke to Keith Dunahoo about three or four weeks ago, probably four weeks ago now at this stage, and I asked him for one Gavin Cromwell horse to follow for the season, and he gave me Antrim Coast. And this was long before he won his maiden hurdle at Punchestown. He said he's a gorgeous horse. He won that maiden hurdle at Punchestown, beat Pearl of Phils, who was supposed to run today, but doesn't. And uh, I'd say it was a decent enough race. He won it convincingly. I'd say he's a nice horse. I'm not surprised he's favoured. Uh, just a couple from the stable tours that I thought were interesting. Um, I said it today in my column in the Racing Post. The fact that Blood Destiny goes chasing, I think, is quite interesting. He's a 33 to 1 shot for the Arkle. He looks like a chaser. He's a big, strapping, imposing type. I could see him exploiting his four year old allowance over fences for Willie Mullins. Obviously, they love Ballyburn. Majborough is a juvenile hurdler who, who he's very excited about in the future. And a couple from Gordon Elliott. Maybe Firefox um, is one that could potentially do pretty well this season over hurdles. He could be an Albert Alba Barclay type because uh, he stays pretty strongly as well. So there's a couple from the stablers and my trump card as well. There's another one from Gordon Elliott. So there's a flavour of some that kind of caught my ear from the stable tours in the last week, Dave. We're all on our apps as we speak, getting that down in our trackers and all that sort of thing. Uh, and Trim Coast, we're going to get to that a little bit later on. He's a big chance, isn't he? Yeah, big chance. Should have been well backed. Should be uh, popular for Cheltenham. And am I right as well? DJ, are you actually on duty today, DJ? Or have, we, have we stopped you from your kippers or whatever it is you're having? No, I'm off. They agreed to pay me tre treble time if I come on the show, so I agreed to come on the show. I'm just about, I'm in a shirt and shorts, would you believe? I'm just about to go to the playground with the kids. Absolutely fantastic. Well, we've loved having you on. Thanks for joining us, DJ. You'll be coming on sporadically each morning, I imagine, will you? Uh, I, I just do what I'm told, Dave, as I do in life. <laughs> in that case, I'll see you all the way up to this day next year. So don't forget, let you know. DJ, all his good stuff out there. Thanks, DJ. That was absolutely superb. Like, subscribe, comment and share. That's what we're doing on YouTube all the way. Uh, am I right? Then he's going to be all over that. He's, that's two fabs he's put up. Is that typical DJ? Or? Uh, no, not necessarily. <laughs> he, can, he, you know, he, can definitely, uh, he can definitely take a punt. I mean, he's put up a 33 one shot for the Arkle as well. Affordable Fury is an interesting horse, isn't he, going tomorrow? Affordale. Aff yeah, yeah. Affordale Fury. Affordale. Everyone does that. I'm just falling in, into the Deneen trap. <laughs> it, 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 he could even mention that. Affordale Fury, yeah, that was of course Stay Away Faye. We'll get a little line on him, I suppose, won't we? I quite like Stay Away Faye. I think he's pretty good, don't you? Um, you do as well, don't you? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, any, any horse that wins a great one for Paul Nichols over hurdles tends to go on to be very good. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, he hasn't had many great one winners in, in novice hurdles. Uh, and the ones he have had all ended up being great one winners over fences. So, mm. is Chris Giles breaking the right sounds? About this guy, he likes him, yeah. Yeah, well, he obviously does like him. Yeah, but you know what I mean. They don't yes, yeah, yes. Had some advice. Everything, system. everything has gone to plan so far. All right, that was the Irish angle, isn't DJ absolutely superb? And again, like, subscribe, comment, and share. Let's get that through the roof. Uh, shall we have a little look at the Sunday racing? Of course, DJ. We hope the Wexford is on. Of course, uh, Galway, another good card there. As DJ was previewing for us, we've got Wincanter with the Desert Orchid. Cup the handicap is there. That will be a you know look to the Badger Ales, but we're going to look at Aintree. It's the Veterans Chase that we are going to look at, which is quite apt with this panel, of course. I'd say you'd be an eight-year-old. Is that fair? <laughs> I like to think of myself as an eight-year-old turning nine in this game. You're unquestionably. I'm a juvenile. I'll be a juvenile for the rest of my life. Thank you very much. You are a 14-year-old still running. They're all out there. You're looking whiter and whiter as greys tend to do as yeah. they go on. Definitely. We all love the veterans chases don't we yeah 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 it's a, it's a great idea i like to see the old warriors come back and give them races where they they're not necessarily running into horses that are 
on the up with tons in hand on handicappers. So, yeah, yeah why not? Great a idea. reminder, the clocks go back this evening, mm. this morning, depends on, on how your night's looking. Don't get caught out by that. But it's one twenty-five tomorrow, the Veterans Chase. And uh, they're sort of, you know, they're all here, aren't they, Johnny? They are. I mean, it's named after a Aintree legend of the veteran. The uh, Leon Rouge Veterans Chase, who was obviously uh, superb around those Grand National fences. Yeah, uh, we're paying four places here. Competitive race, 11 to 2 the field. Nesta Park, Boldmere, Jimmy the Digger. Yeah. We'll let the punters decide here. This is a, a really competitive race. Um, not particularly, not a strong view in it. Um, but yeah, four places. Ground, well, you will have a strong view. A ground at Aintree tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I think it's on, the, uh, it's on the easy side, isn't it? Good at soft. That'll do. Um, God, you threw, threw one at me there, didn't you? I just asked me what the ground is halfway through a meet. Uh, uh, I like Jimmy the Digger. I think he's... You know, he, he looks like he's an early season horse. He goes well fresh. He won yeah. after almost a year off in 2021. He won the Amateur Riders Handicap Chase um, that was won yesterday by Mole Court. He won that last year under Alice Stevens. He rides him. Uh, eight of the last ten year winners have been uh, ten-year-olds as well. Only two 11-year-olds have won it. Now, obviously, the bulk of the field is made up of 10-year-olds, but, but several of the older horses are in single-figure prices. Uh, I'd stick with the 10-year-olds. Jimmy the Digger goes well fresh, goes well for the jockey. It'd be the one for me. It's all building up to the final at Sandown, of course, next year. This is leg eight, isn't it? We saw absolute cracker at Chepstow, didn't we? I think Jimmy the Digger's got a right chance as well. I'll be having a go. I'm a big fan of Alice Stevens. I think that's seven. It's, it's very Henry useful. Daly's in good form. He is. Too. He is, that's something else to say. Um, it's funny this series, right, this veteran series, because one minute it's the final, and then I seem to lose track of what's going on. And then we're in leg eight, and it's the final nearly again, you know. I don't know, I seem to get lost where all these races come well, in. Well, it's funny because, you know, you have the final in January, and there's, like, there's, there's a qualifier a month for a bit later, isn't there? Mm. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, exactly. yeah. So it starts yeah. again. Yeah. You know, we don't, we don't associate with the final being in the middle of the season, but I think it's actually quite good, and I love that meeting at Sandown as well. So, so Jimmy the Digger, solid, solid, yeah? Uh, yeah, well, I, I, I'm not going to back him, though. Uh, the one that I like is um, wishing and hoping. Oh, Alex Edwards also. It, it sprung He's 13. A... Mel Rowley. It, it, yeah. This is you, Kills, man. <laughs> He won the final, didn't he? Tore off with it, didn't he? Might he? Have done. Yeah, I got, just kept I was, going. I yeah. think it was the final, wasn't it? Won, uh, I mean, uh, you know, I'll be going to make the case for him. Yeah, he's won this race as well, too. He won this race first time out two years ago. He was Former Hunter Chaser. In it, first time out last year. So yeah. he's definitely going to be laid out for the race. And he's yeah. going to blast off in front. I like that sort of run style in this sort of race. I think he's got a fun. legion of fans, this horse, because he wins at big prices, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, he'd def definitely be fully wound up for this, going hard at it from the front. Now, I think you'll yeah. get plenty of them at it. There's some good horses running at Aintree tomorrow. You know, mm. Crambo's coming back out. It could be a really good day for, for Dan Skelton tomorrow. Ah, seamless link, because, of course, the highlights on your Sunday service will be the old Rowan Chase, uh, which worked out rather well last year, didn't it? Uh, we're going to have an anti-post look. Stick with us on the show at the Paddy Power Gold Cup um, a little bit later on. And we saw the last year's winner of this, Gar Law, GA Law, whatever you call him, Jamie Snowden's inmate, went on and won at the Paddy Power Chase. We have returning horses in this, none other than my Drogo. He was bound to be favourite. I said to Kills... Once again, I got corrected first thing this morning by Kills. I said he had to be favourite. He went, does he? I said, well, he was bound to be favourite. Yeah, so we'll get your word in, Mike. He's just a very popular <laughs> Make horse. Make sure you're understood. Yeah. But, you know, popular horse. I mean, he he looked like he was top class. Like, you know what I mean? He was, he, you know, he'd have been high up in the market in the novice chases at, at, at Cheltenham uh, uh, until things went wrong with him. Um, but he hasn't been given any real respect for, by the handicapper for two years off. Like, you know, I think he was rated 155 when, when, when he disappeared, and he's 153 coming back. So he's got to come back as good as he ever was and as good as he promised to be, because you've got to remember, he didn't, he didn't get around in, his, uh, uh, in one of his chase starts last year, and the other one was a four-runner race, and he belted the odd fence there as well. You can't belt him at Aintree. You really can't, not on, not on the park course, more, yeah. more so than the national course. That fourth there. last is one of the trickiest yeah. fences so, out there. So, you know, I can understand, you know, He's still only eight. He still has the potential, but you know, it's, it's one of those they never come back, isn't it? Like you know what I mean. More, mm. more often than not, they don't. So he doesn't really interest me as favourite. And well, I mean, I can't desert the great 
hitman, can I? Well, let's before we go on to your <laughs> again expensive project, Kills and the Cliff Horse. Uh, of course, just, just nailed in the race last year. My Drogo must have been a tricky one for you to price up or not? It was, yeah. When I looked at the entries on Monday or Tuesday, um, quite a lot of these have stood the ground. I didn't think as many would run. Um, but my Drogo, yeah, I spent a while deciding where to put him in the market, but we're happy to take him on. Uh, and we'll be 92, 600 days off, like Keel says. Do they ever come back as good? I mean, he was so good at Aintree, winning that grade one over hurdles. But this is a, this is a good race. And I think there's um, a few horses here who will be able to follow for the rest of the season. Um, namely, do your job. I think this could be one of the bets of the weekend. This is a stable switch, isn't it? Wind up. Stable switch, 142. I think this, he went 5-2 to two for this race last year. It didn't quite pan out for him. Uh, but the stable switch, uh, I think first time up, I think this is the time to catch him. I don't know if you listened to the uh, podcast in the week with the other William Hill ambassador, Nick Look, with um, Lucinda. She talked this horse up really well, uh, quoting, could be one of the best horses in the yard. So, whew, of 142, that would be my pick. Of course, he was it, it was comprehensively beaten by Mo Drogo at Kelso, wasn't he, over hurdles, when he was at his peak, Mo Drogo, but yet he's getting nearly a stone off him. You were nodding a lot through that, G. Yeah, it's a stable switch in in sort of name, isn't it? Because My, uh, Michael Scudamore trained him, didn't he? And, and he's gone up, hasn't he, to, to, to become part of the Lucinda Russell yeah. team. So, um, yeah, he's an exciting horse, and he is at the bottom of the weight. But... Um, it's a hell of an ask for my Drogo, isn't it? Six hundred odd days off. He's only faced four rivals as offences in two races. I mean, one was a match with Bell, and the other one was a four-runner race where he went off two to nine. This is going to be all kinds of different. I mean, I, I, I'm excited to see him back, but I wouldn't yeah. have him on my mind at short price. I'm with Kills. I think Hitman's the one. Come on then, let's have it. <laughs> great isn't it, man. He's <laughs> a great horse. He's underappreciated. He, he, he reeled you in uh, in this race a, last he, year, that's for sure. He's a truck. He did reel me in in this race last year, but then he got beaten neck of 159. He's a pound lower. He's been placed in two Grade Ones at Aintree. He was third in the Ryanair. He's got he's got a decent body of work. I got a theory about him. him. I think he has to lead. Uh, I I was. I was. I mentioned that to Paul Nichols, I think, last year. So why don't you just bounce off in front of him? I can't remember what he said. We did it at Haydock I'd and like it to see him. He did it at Haydock in a race that he should have won. But anyway. still, he looked happy to me but that yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to see him, but he, you know that won't happen. You know that won't happen. But he will sit there. He'll be cruising two out. Whether he, whether he decides to go past or not is another matter. But he'll be there and yeah. thereabouts. You won't, I can't imagine you'll lose money if you back him each way. If he produces that Ryanair run in this race... He surely must He's gonna be, be hard. very close. I mean, he was a neck behind Shishkin. He's reeled you in. <laughs> neck behind Shishkin in that yeah. Ryanair. Envoy LM1. Shishkin, yeah. Shishkin was mucking yeah. about that yeah. day and he still was. He's underappreciated and he's only seven. There's still time for him to come good. Mm, lovely horses in this, like Al Dancer, of course, we saw him national mean. Tommy's Oscars, Jatoile is the one that uh, that might have more to offer for Ryan Potts. You've got Hang in there, he's got that summer jumper form, you'll be taking him on, of course. Manella Drama got form with Mydro. It's a great race, isn't it? Is Paddy Powell winner lurking in here? Maybe. Maybe, right, all right. It's possible. It's possible. We're teasing the next section coming up after this. Right, zooming through the show. Welcome along, if you're just joining. The inaugural edition of the Morning Post. Dave Orton joined by some of the best in the business. We've got the trading floor from William Hill here in Johnny Simpson. And we've got uh, Racing Post legends, Paul Keeley and Graham Robway, who've just disgraced themselves by going in again uh, for Hitman. Right, let's get, if you don't mind, let's get the Paddy Power Gold Cup on our mind, shall we? If you go to the William Hill website every week, you get future races, Johnny, don't you, basically, coming up. And, uh, and and despite what you can see on screen right now, which is probably a race today. Yesterday, um, yesterday. Was, was it yesterday? Race, yeah. There you go. All right. Yeah. I was just about to compliment the I'm producers gonna, as well. Gonna, I'm, I'm trying to log on the hills now. Get my, get it on the Hidalgo Bihu. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is that going to be the winner of the race? Is it? <laughs> all right. Well, you've got it there in front of you. You've got Stage Star probably as your favourite. I'd imagine who, who will be a Marmite horse in the race for a lot of people. But this is the anti post look. We're going to pick one race each. Week going forward, I think the Paddy Power Gold Cup is you know it's, it's set now, isn't it? With the, the old rowing, it seems fit. What, what price? Uh, we're 10 to on the field. Uh, the Paddy Power Gold Cup, uh, it's the first real proper betting heat of the season, isn't it? Really, 
Um, we look forward to this, you know, the entries coming through uh, and it's always more or less a 16 runner field, uh, really competitive and there's a few few faces in here that we expect to be. Stage star, that's all right, Gino, who is entered to run uh, Aintree, it's likely a prep for this. Uh, unexpected party, Dan Skelton said this is the target uh, and then probably my selection would be Fugitive, who was a bit of a bridesmaid. Um, I think he'll be tagged for oh. this race, um, just the type to to go well, double figure price. There's some right old characters, isn't he? A fugitive is a thief, isn't he? Oh, no, he's not. He oh, absolutely no. thought about oh. it with Il Rodoto, <laughs> who's quoting in here when those oh, two went clear. I think he's, oh, I mean, don't think Gosh. he's ran into it. I think you're being harsh on him there. Oh, I do well, think you're Richard Hobson probably agree with me. He's like got it. a real whacker in there, of course, oh, like who him. broke he's, Jerry Colomb's heart. Is he running in that? He won't run in that of 160. No. Or whatever he is, will he not chance to know? Yeah, so we've got uh, the likes of Do Your Job in there well, as in the old row, and you've got uh, That's All Right Gino yeah, as well. Yeah, that's funny, That's All Right Gino was always we didn't mention in the uh, in the old row. Now, you've got to remember, trained by Jamie Snowden. Garlow, third in the old row last year, on yeah. to the Paddy Power, won it. Um, so, and he's interesting, you know, he was a tough horse last year, and but he's still interested in your handicaps, I think, on a Mike 149. Yeah. I, I certainly, certainly wouldn't rule him out, and, and one at a bigger price. Assuming it stays as wet as it as it has been for ages, and and you get some proper soft ground, which sometimes you do at the November meeting, sometimes you don't. But Gallia de Lito, yes, travelled beautifully in the Brown Advisory. Um, did not look out of place for a long way uh, in the Grade One at Aintree as well. Jerry Cl behind Jerry Clom. and although she's got three mile form and she's won over three mile, I think she hasn't got yeah. home. And she's running. She's got a mark of 145. I think. I think that could be quite a nice mark. And she does jump really well when she gets it right. I mean, she had that one run at Kempton when she completely yeah. lost her um, confidence. But well, that was going right-handed. They think yeah. she's got to go left-handed. Yeah. She thinks she needs soft ground. Yeah. She, she is. She's, she's 12 with hills at the moment, guys. Yeah. Um, all right. So that's a couple of picks there. I'll be looking at not long till May today in that two-mile race. I'm not going to back him in that, but I've, I've got a feeling we might be underestimating him a little bit. And uh, unexpected parties in there. We saw at Chepstow. You're worried about him getting up the hill, aren't you? Yeah, he's soft, isn't he? He's a soft, you know. He's, oh. he's far more of a thief than fugitive. <laughs> oh, all right then. Okay, one skeleton horse for kills, not the other. And uh, G Rod, I like that's all right, Gino. I think that that is definitely his target, isn't it? The Paddy Power, and he has taken the same route as Kills has already said as last year's winner, Garlor, for the same trainer. He got good form at the course, hasn't he? He was second behind Stage Star there last year. That form's very good. He's just the sort of type for that race, isn't he? Uh, that Paddy Power. You see these also come along, and he, he's just he's just that type, isn't he? You look at him, he just looks right for that race. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I would say about him is they did have him in at Chepstow a couple of weeks ago, didn't they? And they pulled him out uh, on account of the ground. Now, I don't know whether that means he's a bit more forward than Garlor was, and he might well, well run well tomorrow in the uh, old road. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether to back him now or wait and see how he runs in the old run. Because if he runs really well, he's going to be almost favourite, isn't he, after what happened last year. If he runs a similar race to Garlor, what price is he going to be, Johnny? He's going to be about... Well, eight, yeah, favourite, yeah, he'd be very close to favourite, wouldn't he? So I'm quite tempted to back him now. I bigged you up there and you gave us one of the 10 to 1, 5 co-favourites there. <laughs> Shake him up, Harry's another name. I bet they get him right at some point. It's great, it's great race on paper, Shake isn't it? Up, Let's hope most of the big players turn up. That's next month, it's the feature. Uh, but as we... Get ready for the business end of the morning post. It's time for the naps. And the big news here, all of these have been boosted by the William Hill traders. And seeing as you're, it's your, your debut, Johnny Simpson, do you want to give us your best bet for this Saturday? My best bet, we haven't actually talked about this race yet. The 410 at Cheltenham, the Florin Porter, uh, Florin Porter race. I think we've all been caught. You can give him a race. Now, I know he's got loads to find on hurdles form. But we've, we all, we've all been caught. He's a big strapping chaser, and I expect him to improve tons for being sent chasing. Four in Porter, was it eight turning nine? Going chasing now, that kind of price. Take him on all day. 
we've all been caught nap of the day. He's got to improve as a chaser, this bloke, hasn't he? Uh, you'd have thought so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I liked him last year. I thought it was a bit disappointing, but it's just probably the wrong game for him. And was it January meeting him? Around. I can't remember. Was it or December? I can't, well, it was one of them, wasn't it? Tristan really? Davis has got another horse in there, hasn't he, as well? He's won loads in the summer. <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, the Sam hasn't even bothered looking at riding that one, has he? Straight, is it Sam who's on? We've all been caught. He's just yeah, we've got to ride that, hasn't he? He's yeah, got to ride um, that. Uh, you see, right. you're pushing the boat out here, Dave. Yes, I am. Well, my original nap was uh, one of Don McCain's up at Kelso, but I've had too much rain there. Um, six to five. Six to five. You're going to boost it, though, aren't you? You're, 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 you're lucky you sharpening your talent. <laughs> He's boosted, I think. I think, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he, he might well drift this horse. It's Antrim Coast. We heard from, from DJ. I, I saw a great comment from someone in Twitter uh, the other day saying basically Maiden form and Arna's like a grade two. Uh, you know, at Cheltenham, uh, and this is going to go the way of the Irish. Um, you think this is one of the lays of the day, which is almost well, making me more was, confident. Uh, it was just one of the lays of the day. I was probably a bit strong when I was taking the mickey out of you earlier on. But, I mean, I don't see this as a race. I don't think there's enough information uh, that we've seen to make a horse that short in that race. He beat all. a good so horse called Mr Pink so of Willie Mullins. It's, it's, yeah, but it's still... It's, it's He'd still be nearly favourite. It's still, it's, it's still, it's still gossip that makes that. It's a, oh, win, on, it's a good horse. This it's a win. It's a good horse. Yeah, no, okay, again, on RPRs, it's, it's, um, you know, it's not close. It's to Gav Conwell. It's Keith Donner. How good was he on your my mate Mozzie yesterday? It was what a little ride that was. I know he outclassed him, but it was superb to watch. Yeah. Him. Reminiscent of Paul Carberry that. Well, um, race, right, yeah. All right, okay, that's that's two of the naps out of the way. They're being boosted. All of these, you can get them while the show's on. Keep going, G Rob. Where have you gone for? I've gone for Lord Accord two twenty five. I'm another favourite. Yeah, well, he wasn't, was he? You know, but everyone's following him, you know, aren't they? They're, they're punting him big, and um, yeah, everything's right for him, isn't he? Um, laid out for the race, yeah. Neil Mulholland. All right, win, Kills, I, I tipped yours as well yeah. uh, as, as being the nap, and it is. And yeah, I had a good each way bet on Hugo's new horse. I still think he's each way backable for a nap at six to one. All right, those are the naps, and that is about it for your. Update live the morning post every Saturday around about 10 a.m. You can join us. Thanks for doing that this morning. If you liked it, get your comments below. We'll read those as we go off. I've seen loads of interaction coming in. Great to see some old faces out there as well. Johnny Simpson, welcome to the party, man. Thank you very much. Hopefully, uh, come on for the run. Yeah, you can, winners here. Yeah, you can tell us all about how you've had Edgar in your face this time next week. Uh, you're thankfully not here next week. I'm not here next week, thankfully for you, when Antrim Coast gets beat. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm, I will be taking on Lord Accord with relish now this afternoon. Kills, you will be here I'll next be week. back. I'll be back. Lovely. All right, everyone enjoy their Saturday out there from us here at the Racing Post and William Hill. Enjoy the sport. This has been the first inaugural edition of the Morning Post. Well...